Before we begin this video, I'd just like to take a moment to remember our fallen brother in arms, the Zeta Fives. So in this video today, we're going to be taking a look at Nicester Zombie and how you can use her to improve your Nicester scores in Phase 4. Sir Georges has done a fantastic guide with the OG Nicesters. In fact, you definitely can go check out his video. The link should be right up here in the corner. So definitely click on that. Go check out his guide. It's great if you're trying to look at using those OG Nicesters. But with the newer Nicesters that came in with me, Mother Talzin, Zombie, and Spirit, you're able to get some pretty decent damage if you include Mother Talzin in there. But also, if you include Nicester Zombie, she she has some synergies where she constantly dies, comes back to life, but she also ends up boosting the stats and viability of some other Night Sisters in your team. And also a big thank you to Minowara for sending me this footage. This came from his wife who ends up doing over almost 6 million damage with this team in the phase 4. Starts a little bit in the phase 3 and ends up doing 5.9 million damage by the end of this. So big thank you to him and his wife for sending me this footage. There's a link to their YouTube channel down below as well. Definitely go check it out. Help them build up that channel too. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about how we want to mod Night Sister Zombie and then we can go from there. When it comes to modding Zombie, you do want to throw a health mod set on her at least, and then throw it on some speed to make her go fast. You want her to be able to go fast so she can constantly taunt and be able to absorb attacks that would be going for the other Night Sisters. So you need her to be at least somewhat fast. She'll have bonus 30 speed from the Asajj lead, but getting a speed mod set on her, so getting some nice speed secondaries would be cool here. You don't really have to go for health and protection and boosting her survivability on the primaries for the mods. As you can see, we've got an offense on the cross and crit chance on the triangle, so there's not a lot of emphasis on needing to boost her survivability, just making sure she has some nice speed to help be able to make her taunt more often, absorb those hits from the bosses, and be able to die so she can boost the other Night Sisters is how you want to handle the modding for Zombie in this team. Now, for the overall strategy for this team in fighting Phase 4, you do want to have them being used in the beginning of Phase 4 when you're facing both Darth Nihilus and Darth Sion, because you're able to do a lot of terminal removal that can't be resisted on Darth Nihilus, you're going to be able to prolong the phase, deal more damage, the more often that you prevent him from going, the more your damage window is going to be open. So having that unresistible turn meter is a great character, is a great team to use for Darth Nihilus so you can help extend that enrage phase. Now, for Darth Sion and Darth Nihilus, you do have the same mechanics that carry over from their phases. And with that, you do want to avoid using basic attacks on Darth Nihilus because he's going to apply that defense down, which then means he's going to gain protection if you use attacks, basic attacks against him from a character that has defense down. So ideally, you want to use basic attacks on Darth Sion and use your specials and other kind of abilities. If you don't have defense down, you can attack Darth Nihilus then. So there is a delicate balance to using attacks on Darth Sion and Darth Nihilus. But at the same time, Darth Sion is immune to turn meter reduction. So you do have to be very careful of all the stuff that you have to consider when you're attacking these two characters. Of course, Darth Treya in the back is not going to be attackable. She is immune to damage during the time that both those characters are up. And then you also have the Assassin and Marauder that are going to be in as well. They have the Unbreakable Will abilities that you can get to help keep your characters alive, help them survive the Annihilate from Darth Nihilus. So all this comes together to create a bit of a mess here in Phase 4. And really, you do want to focus down those adds first, especially Sith Assassin. She can boost the turn meter on everyone in the fight. That means that they're going to go more often, which means shorter windows of damage before they enrage. You do have Marauder who can daze your characters, but he's not as big as a threat as Assassin. You do always want to take Assassin out first whenever she shows up in the fight. For Darth Treya and her Bonds of Weakness ability here, it's going to stack every time that your characters do something, whether it's counter, assist, they do anything, it's going to include one stack of Bonds of Weakness. The more Bonds of Weakness stacks you have, the more damage your characters are going to take every time. Ideally, you want to cleanse Bonds of Weakness about 15 to 20 stacks. That is about your best area. At the beginning of this fight, uh, she only cleans she cleanses about 10 stacks of bonds of weakness that's not a really good idea because then you're cleansing too often they're going to be on cooldown for when you start building up those 20 to 25 stacks and as you can see during the fight that can really hurt you it can cause you to lose a lot of characters and that could be a huge problem so you do want to make sure that you stack about that you want to stack up bonds of weakness about 15 to 20 times and then cleanse using one of your support characters and you have three support characters in here with mother talzin 
Massage Ventress, and Oldaka. All of them are going to have the Soothe ability to help cleanse the Bonds of Weakness and also remove the cycles of pain and suffering from everybody on the field. So you're going to lose a little bit of damage in the process, but at the same time, you're not going to be losing all that health every time that someone moves. So making sure you cleanse about 15-20 stacks is where you want to go for Bonds of Weakness. Now, with Night Sister Zombie in this fight and with this team, you do want to have Night Sister Zombie always taunting, and of course, getting that speed up on her, making her go more often. That means that she's going to be taunting more often. She gains taunt at the end of each of her turns, so you need her to go often so she can always taunt and take the brunt of the damage from all these Sith that, that will be attacking her. So, making sure she can go pretty fast here, and then you also have the Zeta Asajj lead where she gains 50% turn meter if she falls below 100% health. So, you can always use that to help heal her up, have her move, or have her take damage from Bonds of Weakness. They'll drop her below 100% health, give her 50% turn meter. And that's the other thing here is the Asajj Ventress lead with that Zeta gives a lot of turn meter to your Night Sister so that every time they take damage and they fall below 100% health, they gain a huge amount of turn meter in the process. And that's really great to help making your team go fast. If you do it correctly with Night Sister Acolyte, like you'll see in this fight, you can have her use her basic six or seven times in a row. She carries every time, she heals herself pretty nicely, and then she can go again. So you get this small little quick loop of several basic attacks from Night Sister Acolyte, helps boost her damage, helps her do a lot of damage to the enemy, and then you can cap it off with her special for a pretty nice hit of 40 to 50,000 on a critical hit at least, and then you can start going with the rest of your team. But you do want to be careful because you want to make sure that you're not going to be stacking up too many bonds of weakness in the process. If you're going to have 10 or more stacks of bonds of weakness before you start the loop, it's highly recommended that you go ahead and try to avoid using that. Use our special to help break that loop because that's just going to be too much damage on your Night Sisters here, and then they're just going to take too much damage from something like Darth Nihilus with his AoE attack, or even Darth Sion, and your whole team's going to be dead, and the run is pretty much ruined. So, with Night Sister Zombie in here, like I said, have her taunt all the time, and of course, with this, that means that she is going to be taking a lot of damage, and every time she dies, it's going to synergize with three characters in here. You have with Asajj Ventress, her Zeta Unique on Rampage, every time that zombie dies, she's going to gain 15% bonus health and offense. So that's going to really help boost her damage. You'll see as this fight goes on, she starts dealing tens of thousands of damage every time that she moves with her basic attack. And also helps boost the damage on her special too, so she can eventually one-shot Sith Assassin and Sith Marauder, and that will be a great way to boost another 30% of her damage too. So you have you have the Zeta Asajj Ventress with the Unique there, with Mother Talzin and her Unique anytime that someone falls below 50% health she gains 30% turn meter and with this she is going to be able to move fast if you start taking the health off of zombie if it drops low on health she's gonna gain a lot of turn meter everybody on your team whenever they fall below 30 50% health they are going to help boost the turn meter on Mother Talzin. Mother Talzin can do an AoE attack. She can also attack everybody that has Plague on them. And she has a mass call to assist. So getting that boost on turn meter for her, especially with Night Sister Zombie and your other Night Sisters in here, it's a great synergy for Mother Talzin. And then finally, we have Old Daka with her unique. Every time that an ally is revived, she gains a bonus to her max health. Which means that in the end, her healing ability is going to do much more to help heal up your Night Sisters. And also, it means that she's going to be more durable on her end too. That way, she can take more damage. She's not going to be killed off by some AoE when she's falling low on health. She's going to have a much more higher health pool. She's going to be more durable, which then also means the higher heal accounts. So she, with that Zeta on her unique, she is going to be pretty much the only healer you need to bring in here. I've seen people bring in Talia, but with Old Daka and her Zeta unique, you're going to be just fine bringing in Old Daka. You don't have to worry about Talia in that case. So all three of those characters, have great synergies with Night Sister Zombie there because all of them gain boost in some way from Night Sister Zombie taking damage or even dying in the process. Now, one other question when it comes to Night Sister Zombie and the raid is a lot of people still have their Night Sister Zombie geared at like gear 5 or 6 with using them in arena but unfortunately the time of night sisters in the arena have kind of sort of passed they're still at least semi-viable but they're not going to be top meta like they used to be and so this is as good as a time as any to start gearing up that zombie anywhere between gears 7 or 8 and 12 you can do just fine with gearing them i have seen scores of six and a half million plus 
with gear 7 and I've seen gears I've seen scores just as much with gear 12 so there's really not so much a balance of what's the right gear for Night Sister Zombie as long as you have zombies squishy enough to die in the end that's all that really matters you don't have to go for a set gear level with Night Sister Zombie just do whatever you want to if you want to throw gear 12 on zombie it'd probably be best if you put some crap mods on her and try to avoid boosting her health that much if you want to have her at gear 7 try to get some better mods on her boost up her health and protection a little bit boost her survivability a little bit because you need zombie to at least survive some hits you don't want a zombie that snaps apart as soon as the enemy just so much as glares at her because you need zombie to absorb some hits at the end of the day so having a zombie that can at least survive for a hit or two is a great method for the raid but at the same time you don't want to make zombie too durable because if you have zombie survive too many hits that means that your team is not going to get that damage boost and the viability boost from having zombie not die enough so you need to find a good balance in your gear and mods to help find a great place for nice as a zombie in this kind of team so that is pretty much it for me with this video guys if you have any questions or comments feel free to ask down below a big thank you again to minowara for sending me this footage as again definitely go check out his channel but that is it for me guys as always thanks to everyone for watching and to all my mcminions out there i will talk to you guys later